Well, a warm greetings to everyone. A very good afternoon to the IHRP community and our special guest, NTU Deputy President and Provost, Professor Ling Sun, the Dean of Nanyang Business School, Professor Christina So, for being here today. And thank you, IHRP, for giving me the time to say something during this event. It is absolutely surreal right here. Uh, I know there are 600 plus of you who have dialed in, but right here, there are only a handful of us. I better take my mask off so that I can breathe properly. So first, let me convey my heartiest congratulations to the 500 plus newly conferred IHRP certified professionals and senior professionals. Well done. This certification is the hallmark and it is also the national endorsed standard of excellence for HR. This past 18 months have been challenging. There is a silver lining, however, and this is now more so than ever. Corporations recognized the value of HR and the necessity to invest in HR development. Many HR leaders that I've spoken to have told me that this has been one of the busiest years for them, including 2020. And in many ways, this is an endorsement of the critical nature of HR's role. Mayang had mentioned in his opening remark that this year, 2021, marks the fifth year anniversary of IHRP, when it was first set up by the tripartite partners on 9th of August, 2016. In 2017, IHRP certified its first batch of HR professionals. There were 88 of you there. Today, IHRP has certified more than 4,000 HR professionals in Singapore, and these professionals are employed across more than 2,600 organizations. Many of these corporations have signed up to the IHRP corporate partner programs, recognizing the IHRP certification as a preferred hiring criterion for HR positions. Now beyond certification, IHRP assesses also leads the National Human Capital Diagnostic Tool Program, or HCDT in short. And today, HCDT has assessed the majority of more than 500 companies who have at the same time extracted value from this diagnostic assessment. And I will also say that HCDT assesses the majority of HR across 11 HR processes. The impact of COVID-19 is penetrating, and in the months and the years to come, businesses will focus on recovery. Singapore's workforce must get back on its feet, reset, and potentially reskill. And HR will have, will have to step up and assert the roles that it must play. Therefore, today, I'm pleased to announce the signing of the Memorandum of Agreement between IHRP and NTU's Nanyang Business School. IHRP and NBS will be collaborating on the launch of two new mini master's programs to develop talent in HR. The mini master's program offers two pathways, one in HR thought leadership. This program aims to help HR professionals fast track their career in HR through strengthening their knowledge and competencies in business, digital and financial acumen. The second mini master program is in strategic HR performance. And this program equips non-HR professionals who are keen to take on a HR role in their organization or make a career transition in HR. This strategic partnership between IHRP and NBS couldn't have come at a more opportune time. Human capital is a major driver of sustainable growth and also uplifting of living standards. And in my mind, this generation of HR professionals is best positioned to be developers of human capital. Traditional CEOs have a narrow view on the role of its HR, generally to fulfill recruitment responsibilities and probably generalist HR functions such as HR policies, payrolls. 
But this would be underutilizing the capacity and the potential of progressive HR professionals. There's an article I read about two years back and the headline had stuck in my mind. And this is what it says. HR is not here to be your friend. It is here to protect the company. This drives a shift in the mindset on the role of HR in corporations. And when I think back about the multiple roles that I have done, there is no way that I could have achieved what I have achieved if I do not have a strong HR partner. A HR partner who understands the culture necessary in order for us to deliver the vision. One who understands how to, make, how to motivate people and make them better leaders. In short, someone who understands how to leverage the power of a strong workforce. And if HR wants to do more than facilitate transactional processes, it must be empowered to do so. It must also have the capability and the desire to play that co-pilot role with the CEO and other business leaders. There is then this need and a constant need for upskilling, and it matters. Now to conclude, the journey ahead for the HR sector is an exciting one and a fulfilling one at the same time. HR professionals will continue to play a pivotal role in helping their organizations recover and transform as we emerge out of this crisis. IHRP, along with our strategic partners, will continue to do our best to develop a competent and credible pool of HR professionals that meets the current and the future needs of Singapore's economy. With this, I will end here, and I will thank you all for giving me the time to have delivered this speech. Thank you.